Guys, it's your boy Joe back at it again, man. CodingPhase.com, your boy's backing out and did it again. All right, listen, today's topic is 2018's software engineering talent shortage. It's quality, not just quantity. All right, <laughs> so the shortage of, of engineers out there, uh, according to this guy, is it's the quality. All right, uh, pretty much, you know, I'm pretty sure this this is my my opinion reading this article and listening to this guy um, talk about this. I'm pretty sure where he's coming from is the fact that there might be companies out there that are looking for a specific type of engineers. OK, there's definitely engineers that, you know, that know more than others, you know, because everybody who's out there, let's say an example, somebody could graduate with a software engineering degree right they could you know graduate with a engineering and with an electrical electrical engineering degree or a programming degree etc right you guys fill in the blank because <laughs> people create in freaking degrees every single day but pretty much what it means is like anybody could graduate from those those degrees but doesn't mean that they are actually coming out of those schools prepare OK, and I think this is one of those reasons why now self-taught developers are really popular out here, because when you come out of college, most of these college students, what they do is they do the projects in their school. And that's it. They look to get an A. They look to pass the SATs when they was in high school and they go to this four year school. Most of these kids, they're not coming out with nothing amazing. They're not creating projects on their own. They're just doing projects to fulfill their their classes that's it so when they graduate they're not even prepared they're not really looking at the technologies that's out there what programming languages are popular you know where are their jobs in in their area etc right they just not prepared and i think for self-taught developers this is great because at the same time if you are a self-taught developer you could actually come in and take those jobs right like let's say somebody who wants to learn golang let's say you've been doing this on your own you are a front-end developer for a few years and you say hey you know what i'm gonna teach myself uh golang right and i'm gonna get really really good with golang there's jobs out there for one hundred eighty thousand dollars for golang right most of the, the companies they looking for somebody who's gonna hit the ground running and I keep saying that to you guys. I've been saying that for a while. And it was funny to see this guy using that same term. Let me see. Hit. Yeah. So he basically used the same term because that's what companies are looking for. You know, he said right here, Ganesan of Kiba, an international engineering IT recruitment firm, told Goodcore, for example, many small and medium sized companies do not provide on the job training and inst instead one employees to hit the ground running but unfortunately the skill sets that allow them to do their job in such a manner are not being taught at school there's a problem around the globe not just in the united states all right companies that demand software engineers who can hit the ground running are accelerating the talent shortage and soaring salaries meaning you know they paying more money out there but you got to be able to know these things like I, I know a lot of very good engineers, right? Even guys that I've seen in meetups, guys who have been doing this for, you know, 20 years, 30 years, and they know all the fundamentals, but they don't keep up with what's out there. You know, like I'll go in there and I'll teach them, you know, React or I'll teach them Hyper App or I'll teach them, you know, Angular 5 or whatever, and I'll blow them out the box. Do I have an engineering degree? Do I have 20 years as a software engineer out there? Nah. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, let's say Kotlin. Kotlin is very popular right now. It's growing up in, in, you know, software engineering and programming. You know, a lot of people out there, they just don't have that skill. Somebody who's self-taught can actually go in there and pretty much just be like, hey, you know what? I'm going to learn this and I'm going to work hard. And I'm going to, you know, <laughs> uh, really work hard. I was about to curse, but <laughs> I'm not. Um, but yeah, just work hard, man. You know, and just get this done. 
You know, one thing that the guy, he said a couple of things in here, which gave me this feeling also of like a lot of people are, are mad also at the same time like there's a lot of engineers people keep saying like oh no this is great no there's a lot of engineers out there people who we could call engineers quote unquote guys who who got all the fundamentals who went to a computer science uh degree they graduated some of them even have masters they know the whole stack they know everything about you know hexadecimals and freaking you know binaries and all the whole shebang they know all of that stuff but they super outdated, right? When you graduate from school, you realized that, hey, man, like I know the fundamentals, but now I got to really freaking, <laughs> I now I really got to gotta learn this stuff, you know? Because in reality, you know the fundamentals and the theory, but you don't know anything of what's going on out there. You know, like there's people that don't understand what's going on. Like, you know, there's people who they're like, oh, yeah, I know C. So maybe C is close to objective C. And then you you start looking for jobs and like you realize, oh, people are not using objective C no more. People are using Swift. So there's more jobs for developers that know Swift because a company doesn't want to train you. A company doesn't want to take that risk and be like, hey, man, we need to get this done. But you know what? Let's hire this guy and let's see if he, he could actually learn this stuff in a month or two. People get, you know, people get fired all the time, you know, because you could get hired and then people see that you can't keep up or people see that you don't know uh, as much as you should know. And then you get let go. It happens all the time. And a lot of these people end up in boot camps. A lot of these people end up on, you know, uh, freaking going to school again, taking a, a, a web development uh, course in a college, uh, paying $500 for a course on, on the internet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like those are the things that, that people do when they're not prepared. Right. And that's, what's going on right now in the industry. People want, you know, developers and programmers, engineers, it doesn't matter what the title is. You know, they want people that can hit the ground running people that they say, Hey man, we need to build this whole website and we need to, you know, create the back end, create the front end, uh, set up the database, set up a, a nice structure that is going to be able to, you know, scale later on. That's it. That's all they really need. They don't have time for you to come in and be like, oh, you know what? We're going to train you for, you know, two, three months, get you up to par. Like it's rare that any company does that at all. Like I'm being honest, it's very rare that any company does that. That's why I tell you guys, you guys got to prepare yourself. You guys got to learn on your own, you know, because the the fact that you're here, the fact that you either come into my website, you either come into Udemy, you either coming to any website that's out there and you're trying to learn this stuff, you know, the, the things that are popular out there for companies currently, right? Whatever's popular out there right now, you should be learning it. And the fact that you're trying to learn it puts you ahead of a lot of people because this is what you guys don't understand, man. There's so many people out there looking for jobs. Like, yes, there's a lot of jobs for developers, but just like a lot of you guys who don't have experience, there's people out there who are graduating from, you know, really good schools and, you know, four year universities. And, you know, they come out and they're like, man, I just graduated from this university, but I don't know how to build a website. There's people like that. They just don't know how to build a website. There's people that don't know the back end. They don't understand how to, I mean, they might know how to do uh, certain things with databases and, you know, uh, doing migrations and, and or how you call this relationships or dealing with no SQL, et cetera, big data. They might know those things but they don't know how to build a website. They don't know how to build a web app, right? There's people out there that know all these fundamentals, but don't know how to build a phone application. All right. But you as a developer, you actually know this stuff, right? So this is why I tell you guys like, Hey man, all these projects that I have on my website, or even the five projects that I already gave you guys, you should be building it. I still don't understand why people are still sending me portfolios 
without any of the projects that I told you guys to do. Like you don't have real projects on your portfolio. You don't have real experience. You don't have clients. You don't have references. You don't have nobody that's going to back you up. How do you think that you're going to get hired? There's no way that you're going to get hired, you know, and this is happening to a lot of people out there. You know, here, this guy, he put in like the, the numbers for different, uh, you know, different cities. So like, let's say a front end developer, Boston making 97,000 front end developer, uh, 102,000 New York. And I'll be honest, these numbers are not for junior developers. This is people who know what they're doing. This is not just like, Hey, this is what you're going to get coming out, out of college. This is what you're going to get, uh, learning stuff online. No, this is the, the stuff that you're going to get. Like once you have a year or two in it, because there's been this, this lie out there of like people's telling other people like, Hey man, you go to this boot camp. Hey, you take this core. You're going to make, you know, a hundred dollars an hour. You're going to make $90 an hour guys. It doesn't work like that, man. It's like a stepping stone. Companies are not going to trust you to be touching, you know, a business code, right? They're not going to trust you. So you have to start from the bottom. These numbers that are here are not for the, the people that are just starting. You know, sometimes people will get lucky, but you have to understand that there is a, a, a big word in there in that sentence that I just said, lucky. And then we cut it down. We say luck, right? What can you do to change your luck is to basically learn the things that is popular out there. The things that, you know, other developers are not really putting in that time. Like, let's say, for example, I'm working in a company, right? I'm working as a developer and even other developers that I know from companies I've worked for, right? I'm the only person that goes home and actually studies and creates things on his own time. Nobody else does that. You know what? 90% of you guys that are here on this channel, you guys will get jobs, right? Now from those 90% of, of you guys, maybe 10% of that 90% is going to actually come in to your house and study when you get home, once you get that job. Most people act like, oh my God, I'm tired. I don't want to look at a screen. I don't want to do this and that. This is what happens to everybody. They want to hang out with their friends. Nah, this is a very competitive uh, career. You can't just be like, hey, I got a job. That's just great. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to stay home and I'm not going to learn anything. That's it. I got a job. I know HTML, CSS, and WordPress. Like, yeah, you know, WordPress, but you need to grow. You need to start learning other stuff. Learn, you know, PHP Laravel so you could get a better job in six months from now, right? You could come in and say, hey, now I know Laravel. You know what? I'm going to do Laravel for a year or two. You know what? Maybe I'll learn, you know, something like Ruby on Rails. Maybe I'll learn something like, um, I don't know, .NET, right? So you could get to the next level and you could start earning the money that's here, you know, because if you don't learn those skills, you leaving money on the table and you getting to put yourself stuck somewhere, right? One thing that I always tell people, never be loyal to a company because the company's never going to be loyal to you, right? So what does that mean is, hey, try to learn as much as you can. And the first moment that you get to get out of that company, take it if they're going to pay you more. You know, people stay in companies and they'll stay there for five years. Like, oh, yeah, I'm comfortable here. It's only 20 minutes away from my house. Oh, yeah, I like everybody here at my job. It's, com it's very comfortable. You get very bored because you've been doing the same projects, the same work for years, you know. And then at the same time, you're only growing 3% maximum. That's like a 3% of like uh, of an increase to your, your salary per year. And that's if the company want to be nice. There's companies out there, small businesses and medium sized businesses that if you don't ask for the raise, they're not going to give it to you. I know people that have been in, in companies for years and never got a raise like years and, and just didn't get a raise. 
they'll get a, a, a 3% raise after three, four years. And it's like, wait, what? What were you doing? Like, you know what I mean? Like, why you put yourself in that situation? Now, like, these numbers are very interesting. You know, a lot of times people come in and be like, hey, man, uh, you know, I want to do web development, right? You know, there's numbers for web developer, front-end developer. They're nice. They look nice. They look cute. You know, they look like, hey, juicy. You're like, oh, man, I, that's what I want to learn, right? You think about that, and you're like, okay, I'm going to get $80,000 when I start. Most likely not. You might just get fifty, sixty thousand dollars starting, right? Then from there, your first year, you go in, you work, you earn a couple of skills. Then let's say, for example, you get really good with something like React or Angular. Then you go in, you get another job. Now you're getting like seventy-five, eighty, because a company is going to look at you and they're gonna be the first thing they're gonna ask you is, how much were you making in the last company, right? If you come in and you say, hey, I was making. Eighty thousand dollars. There's a chance the company might ask you, "Hey, can you provide us proof that that's what you was earning?" And it happens. There's people that they ask them, "Like, hey, man, how how much you was earning?" You say, "Oh, I was earning ninety thousand," and they ask you for proof. All right, a pay stub or any type of information, and then they'll match it or give you a little bit more. But what happens if you don't have that? Now you're at, you know you're you effed up. <laughs> Right? You're effed up and it happens. So you have to grow accordingly. Okay. And a company is going to pay you accordingly to the skills that you have and the years of experience that you might have. All right. Now, like I said, there were certain things here that I liked about this article and certain things that I did not like about this article because I feel like reading it, I get this feeling of the person kind of feels like, hey, man, this. Uh, a very few talented uh, developers or programmers, software engineers out there. And then everybody else is like subpar. And sometimes it's not really true. I, I don't think that there's like, you know, so many uh, engineers that are not good or that don't know how to code or whatever you want to call it out there. That's actually the minority of people that I've seen. There is a minority of people that you'd be like, how the hell did this person get a job? This person doesn't know anything. This person doesn't keep up with the industry. This person is still coding as if it was, you know, 1994. A lot of times you might see that, but they are the minority from everybody else. They're not the majority. Okay. So there was things in here where I felt like, man, there were like little shots to, to people who are, let's say, not the best engineers in the world, because this is something that I think. I don't think you have to be the best in the world. You should strive to be the best of the, in the world, right? Everybody is, is like basketball, right? And I know people hate when I do this because they were like, man, this is math. This is two plus two is four, and that's it. It should be, you know, black and white. But when you bring an example like basketball, it doesn't make sense. Well, it does make sense. So let me break it down for you. I'm breaking it down in a very simple terms and something that we could relate to real life. Let's say an example. Somebody's a basketball player, right? He goes to high school. He was the MVP in high school. He was the MVP in college. When he goes to the NBA, right? He goes to the NBA. He figures out that he's not as talented as the number one guy. Let's say an example, LeBron James who people say is the best guy, best basketball player out there. Me, I don't know. But let's say somebody says he's the best player. Does everybody need to be LeBron James to get the job done? No. It just is not going to happen. There's going to be people who are talented. And we all understand that. There's people who have that certain gift, right? But not everybody needs to be the LeBron James of web development or LeBron James of software engineering or LeBron James of whatever programming language you're thinking of, right? It, it, people just don't have to be that, right? And there were certain things here on, on this article that just gave me this feeling as if this person feels like, hey, everybody should be like, uh, you know, the LeBron James of, of programming. And it's like, nah, in a team of developers, a lot of times, all you really need 
is one person who is actually the senior or the architect or the CTO or uh, let's say, yeah, the CTO or somebody who's really in charge of the whole project. He needs to be the LeBron James, right? Everybody else don't need to be the LeBron James. Everybody else just need to be, you know, uh, somebody good, right? Somebody that's good and, and can do the job. Because a lot of times when you're working at companies, it's not about who's the most talented. Because you can't, you're just not going to find that all the time. You're not going to find super duper uh, quadruple <laughs> talented people. You're just not, right? What you're going to need is extra hands, right? There's people who are just programmers. There's people who are just developers. There's people who are just engineers. People who just can get the job done. Right. If you give them a, a task or you guide them, they can get the job done. That's it. Now, the person who is like the LeBron James of the team needs to be in charge of the rest and be like, hey, guys, you know what? Uh, you guys are actually doing it like this. There's a, actually a better way. Let's do it this way. And he guides the other developers. Not everyone needs to be the LeBron James of programming. OK, so that's the thing that. I kind of, you know, fought against this because it's like, you know, there's a lot of companies that's going to pay people very well out there for being, you know, whoever is like the top of, you know, the top of, of the game. But it doesn't mean that everybody else is, is ish, right? Fill in the blank, you know, just because they're not LeBron James of programming. <laughs> If that's, I don't know, if that's like a simple way to explain it to people, right? Because you just have to have one person that's like super duper talented and is really good. And then help have that person guide the other developers. All right, guys. So what I'm going to say is if you want to become a developer, you want to improve your skills, you want to get the latest tech out there right the latest programming languages you want stuff that you can actually put on your portfolio you know skills that you're gonna need for your job we're not talking about stuff that you're not going to need we're not talking about theory we go into some type of theory but i give you real life examples real projects stuff that you're going to be needing as a developer if you want to get those things man check out my website codingphase.com i'll make it super affordable for everybody my courses are super cheap, you know, and they're cheap for a reason. I'm not looking to become a millionaire. I'm not looking to come in here and, and give you guys like, hey, I want to charge you an arm and a leg. I know what it is to become a self-taught developer. And I know how it feels like when you're in the beginning and you're lost and you're like, man, I'm spending so much money and I'm wasting time. Let me help you get on your way to where you need to go, man. Like, listen, man. You come into my description, you check the links below, right? And automatically you're going to see there's a link that says, hey, 50% off on everything that I have on my website. If you say, hey, all I want to learn is PHP and Laravel, this thing becomes $20. Hey, you want to learn build a restaurant web app? Hey, this thing becomes, you know, 12.5, right? This thing becomes $10 per month, all right? So it's something very simple, all right? But what's cool about this is, like, I make this thing affordable for everybody. I make it, you know, really good. This is, like, me sharing all of my skills on one website. You know, like, if you want to buy a course independently, that's great. If you want to come here and say, hey, I'm just going to buy the old access pass and get access to all of the courses, then you can also do that. All right, man? Okay, so I'm going to see you guys later.